Hi guys! Today my family and I are taking advantage of the museum's free for all day. Over 30 museums in Southern California are offering free admissions as part of this annual event. So you live in Southern California and happen to have missed this event? No worries. Just mark your calendar for next year. Our museum of choice today is the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles. I haven't been to this museum in ages. As a matter of fact, the last time I visited this museum was with my dad, and that was well over 30 years ago. I think another visit to this museum is long overdue. Today I'm taking my own kids here, and it's going to be their very first visit to the Natural History Museum. What I'm most excited to see today is the museum's newest exhibit called Diamonds Rare Brilliance. It is said to be the most expensive collection the museum has ever exhibited, and it includes the extremely rare 30 karat Juliet Pink Diamond. You know what they say, diamonds are a girl's best friend. So I'm here to see my bestie today. <laughs> Alright guys, let's go and explore this museum. Ooh, looks like there's a dinosaur battle going on in here. It's a T-Rex versus a Triceratops. My money is on a Tyrant Lizard King, baby. The T-Rex is fierce and it's just massive. Okay, let's go check out the Gem and Mineral Hall. It is home to more than 2,000 diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and gemstone specimens. Boy, it's dark in here. Who turned off the light? <laughs> Alright, let's go take a look around the room and hopefully I don't trip over anything or anyone. <laughs> It's so pretty and colorful in here, guys. They have gems of all colors, sizes, and shapes. We're now going to enter the vault, and in there is the most sparkly exhibit of them all. On display are some rare colored gems never before seen in the United States, and I am so very excited to have the chance to see these gorgeous stones in person. This stunning pink stone here is the priceless Juliet Pink Diamond. It is an extremely rare pink diamond of over 30 carats, y'all. Man, this necklace here is fit for a queen. <laughs> it is just absolutely gorgeous. In the vault, you can view diamonds, rubies, sapphires, gold, and other exquisite gems. This is the Rainbow Diamond Necklace, and it is made of 88 rare natural color diamonds from five continents. I was told that it took five years to assemble this spectacular piece. Wowzer! If you're interested in coming to see these rare beauties, they will be on display until March 19th, 2017. Alright y'all, let's exit out of the vault. I am just amazed by the sheer number of gems and minerals that they have on display. I have never seen so many gems and minerals in one place before. Well that's it for the gem and mineral hall. Let's head on over to the next exhibit. Ooh, looky what I see. In the hallway of the museum is a skeleton of an oarfish. This oarfish is 14.5 feet long and was recovered from the Santa Catalina Island in 2006. Oarfishes are the largest known living species of bony fish. They can grow up to 27 feet long, y'all. That's just crazy. Human encounters with live oarfish are usually rare, though, because these giants typically live in the deep ocean. And this is just one reason why you ain't ever gonna see me swim in the ocean. Nope. No thank you. So next, we're going to go into the Hall of African Mammals. 
In this hall are life-size displays that replicate animals living in their natural habitat. Just check out the details in each of these scenes. It is simply spectacular. The museum's habitat dioramas are among the finest in the world, and they showcase a range of habitats from desert to rainforest. Everything in these dioramas are so realistic, including the trees and plants. You can tell a lot of work goes into each and every one of these dioramas, and they are nothing less than perfect. Also, the backdrops aren't painted by just anyone, guys. Nope. They are only painted by prominent artists, so the backdrops themselves are considered noteworthy pieces of fine art. I love this ostrich here. He's so cute, and it looks like he's smiling for the camera. <laughs> Alright, let's exit out of here. Where shall we go next, guys? How about we check out this exhibit, called Becoming Los Angeles. This exhibition explores the growth of Los Angeles over the course of five centuries. It tells the story about how Southern California went from a tiny Pueblo to a sprawling metropolis. At 14,000 square feet, Becoming Los Angeles is the largest exhibition in the museum. Six major historica eras are covered in this exhibit, including the Spanish Mission Era, the Mexican Rancho Era, the Early American Period, the late 19th and 20th centuries, the Great Depression, and World War II to the present time. The highlight of this exhibit is a large-scale model of a 1930s downtown Los Angeles. It was created by the Works Progress Administration in 1939 as a planning tool to help study downtown Los Angeles. Alright, let's head on over to the next exhibit. This one is called The Age of Mammals. And this exhibit traces the evolution of mammals over the course of 65 million years based on geology and climate. Continents move, climates change, mammals evolve. It tells the story of the extinction of the dinosaurs and the rise of the human being. In 2001, this 50,000 year old mastodon skeleton was discovered at a construction site in Simi Valley and it is now the centerpiece of this exhibit. Alright, on to the next exhibit guys, and this here is the Dinosaur Hall. The centerpiece of this hall is a display showing the three growth stages of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. On display is a 34 foot young adult, a 20 foot juvenile, and an 11-foot baby. The baby T-Rex was approximately two years old when it died, and it is the youngest known T-Rex fossil found in the world. You will not see the T-Rex growth series display anywhere else but here at the Natural History Museum, as it is the only display of its kind. Next, we're going into the North American Mammal Hall. This hall is similar to the Hall of African Mammals seen in the beginning of this video, as they both display dioramas of animals in their natural habitat. Both halls are pretty much the same, except they showcase different animals. You know, I had visited this museum as a child, and these habitat dioramas are pretty much the only theme that I can remember about this museum. <laughs> I guess these dioramas had made a lasting impression in my memory because I can't seem to remember anything else about this place. These habitat dioramas had got to have been my favorite as a child, but as an adult, I still feel the same way about it. They are so pretty, so real looking, and just mesmerizing.
We are now entering the Discovery Center in Insect Zoo. If you're into creepy crawly bugs, then this part of the museum is for you. We are on the second floor of the museum and it's on to the next exhibit guys. This one is called Visible Vault. This exhibit showcases over 600 objects from the ancient civilizations of Latin America. Ha! Huh, this guy's shaped kind of funny. <laughs> We're now walking into the Hall of Birds. I have to say that this is my least favorite part of the museum, and it probably has something to do with the 1963 Alfred Hitchcock's horror flick, The Birds. <laughs> Any of y'all remember this movie? If you don't know this movie, it's about a small northern California coastal town that is suddenly attacked by massive flocks of vicious birds. <laughs> Oh my, there are just a ton of birds in here, and I feel like they're about to all come alive and attack me. <laughs> Believe me, you would feel the same way too if you watched the movie. <laughs> this part of the museum just creeps me out, but I'm sure it's great for all you bird enthusiasts though. <laughs> Next, we're going to walk through the marsh, to another part of the bird hall, and then the rainforest. This is their shells exhibit, and they have more than 200 specimens on display. The exhibit showcases a diverse mix of shells from around the world, including seashells, land, and freshwater shells. You can also view some rare, endangered, and extinct shells. Let's head outside guys to take a break and get us some fresh air. The museum has a beautiful three and a half acre nature garden. It serves as a learning garden and is also a habitat for urban wildlife. Local critters are welcomed here. <laughs> I love it out here. It's an oasis of nature in the middle of a busy city.
Alright guys, my kids are hungry. That means it's time to leave. <laughs> the museum is multi-level and unfortunately, we didn't have the time to check out the exhibits in the basement level. We're going to have to come back another time. This museum is just huge, guys. It is the largest natural and historical museum in the western United States. There is just so much to see and do here. Man, look at that line. <laughs> Luckily, when we arrived this morning, we only had to wait about 10 minutes to enter the museum. If you ever do come on a free day, be sure to arrive early. We had a great time today, and it was educational too. The Natural History Museum is a wonderful place to visit with the entire family. Thank you all for watching my videos. Have a fabulous day, y'all. And until my next video, I'll see you later, alligator. Bye!